Hi, on this session, I'm going to take you through the three approaches to calculating value at risk or VAR. Now, if you're new to value at risk or if you're not familiar with this term, I would encourage you to have a quick look at my video on what is value at risk. You can click the link here on the top and it will take you to that video. So the three approaches are the first one is called historical simulation. Uh, we can also call it as non-parametric. And the second one is parametric approach. And the third one is Monte Carlo simulation. Now, historical simulation is by far one of the most used methods to calculate VAR. Almost all the banks I've worked in uses, uh, I've seen uh, be historical simulation being used extensively. So let's see how historical simulation works. Now, when we talk about historical simulation, what we are saying is, so let's say let's assume that you want to calculate the VAR of a particular portfolio or a particular trading desk or even a particular set of trades. So when we talk about historical simulation, what we do is we take the actual historical profits or losses of that particular portfolio. So here I'm showing you as an example. Let's assume that we want to calculate the 95% one day VAR. So if we want to calculate the 95% one day VAR and let's assume that we are taking the last 100 days profits or losses of a particular portfolio. Now it doesn't have to be 100 days. Normally when you calculate VAR you will look at an extensive period especially on the historical simulation. You could look at last year for example that will be 250 trading days on average or you could look at a whole period of 10 years or 5 years of actual profits and losses of a particular portfolio. So for this example, let's assume that we, we are looking at the last 100 days. So these are the actual profits and losses of, of the last 100 days. And what I've done is I've sorted them in an ascending order starting with the worst loss. So if you are saying, we and these are the daily profits and losses, because remember we are calculating the one day VAR with 95% confidence. So what this means is the fifth largest loss which is 98 in this case. It could be 98,000 or 98 million, but in this case, let's just say it's 98. That's the fifth largest loss. So basically what we are saying is that tomorrow's loss, remember it's one day war. So if you're calculating it today, what we are saying is tomorrow's loss will not exceed 98 with 95% confidence. That means 95% of the time, tomorrow's loss will not exceed 98. So the maximum we can loss tomorrow in this portfolio will be 98 and we are saying this with 95% confidence and remember this is based on historical records. So these are actual historical values. So in an, when you do an historical simulation what's important to remember is that we do not care about the distribution. In other words if you take all the historical profits and losses of a particular portfolio or a particular trading desk a trade whatever it will not follow a particular distribution so that's what i've just kind of drawn it like this to say that the distribution does not matter and this this red line is basically you could say that this red bar is a 95 percent bar which is 98 dollars so, so you can see that the red one is 98 dollars and the green one here i'm just showing that's 95 so that's historical simulation. So what's important for you to remember is that when we use historical simulation, we do not assume any distributions. And also in historical simulation, we take the actual profits and losses of a portfolio and then we calculate the VAR. Uh, in, in another video, I will show you a worked example on how, to, how you can calculate historical VAR uh, on an uh, Excel spreadsheet. So the next approach is the parametric approach. Now in parametric approach, so as you can see, we assume some parameters. The first big assumption, which is normally is not true, is that we assume that profits and losses, in other words, the daily returns or, you know, in, in this case, we are saying it's one day war. It could be one day or 10 day war, but we are assuming that profits and losses are distributed in a following a normal distribution which is not true. 
so most of the time you will see financial derivatives or financial assets the daily profits and losses or even the 10 day profits and losses do not follow a normal distribution so this is a very high level assumption that doesn't tie back to reality so when we use the parametric approach we only need two inputs so in other words you can call them parameters we need two inputs one is the average or the mean of the profits and losses and then the standard deviation now standard deviation is simply the volatility so if you calculate the volatility and the mean in other words and the average of profits and losses you can calculate the VAR so here we are saying if it's one day VAR at 95% confidence level so simply that equals mean in other words the average of the uh, profits and losses minus 1.645 standard deviations now minus 1.645 is basically when we say 95% VAR what we are saying is the 5% of the normal distribution on the left hand side is 1.645 standard deviations away from the mean so in order to calculate this point here what you need is you need the mean so that's what we have here mean mean is simply the average so if you're calculating the VAR of a particular portfolio let's say you have a particular options portfolio and you want to calculate the VAR of that portfolio based on this parametric approach with one day VAR at 95% confidence level you will calculate the mean or the average of the daily profits and losses of that portfolio and that will be your mean here and then minus because you need to go to the left 1.645 that's the standard deviations for a 95% VAR times the standard deviation standard deviation is simply the volatility of your profits and losses so you can see when you use the parametric approach it's quite simple because you just need your mean and your standard deviation the, the once you have those two you can calculate your VAR but it's most of the time you will underestimate your VAR in other words it, you will be it will be much it will be lower than your historical simulation because you are assuming that your profits and losses are distributed following a normal distribution and that's not the case in reality so that's something to remember so finally we have the Monte Carlo simulation so in this approach what you do is you take your current portfolio or the portfolio that you want to calculate your VAR for and you simulate future profits and losses based on some predefined conditions so here what I'm basically showing you is that you can simulate thousands of or hundreds of various parts now some banks use Monte Carlo simulation for path dependent option portfolios so if you want to calculate VAR for a particular path dependent option portfolios some of the banks I worked in I've seen they were using Monte Carlo simulation so in Monte Carlo simulation you simulate your future scenarios based on predefined parameters and then you calculate your 95% VAR so that that's basically the last 5% and you say this is my VAR so remember in a Monte Carlo simulation you do not use your historical profits or losses or you do not assume parameters such as the parametric approach but you simulate your profits and losses based your future profits and losses based on predefined characteristics and then you could calculate your 95 percent wow and I'll show you an example on how you could actually do this as well so remember value and value at risk can be calculated based on various approaches the most popular one is the historical simulation and it's very popular in almost all the banks I've worked in and also I've seen some banks using Monte Carlo simulation I haven't seen parametric approach being used in most of the banks I've worked in it's useful for a very high level proxy or very high level you know in order to calculate y at a very high level but if you're looking at especially non-linear derivatives such as option portfolios it's not safe to use parametric approach hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions you can post it in the comment section or drop me an email and also like the videos and you can subscribe to the channel and i'll make sure i'll post 
more videos on Wow. Thank you.